Welcome to the e-commerce coffee break podcast and our summer school. This week it's all about loyalty. So let's dive right into it. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break. Today we want to talk about loyalty programs. We want to find out what opportunities can loyalty bring to you and usually it's much more than just giving your customers points. So we want to find out a little bit more about this. For that, I have Fiona Stevens with me. She is the head of marketing at Loyalty Line at loyaltyline.com, a data-driven loyalty and engagement platform for fast-growing e-commerce merchants. Fiona has 14 years experience in marketing, has worked in in-house and agency side across functions, including PR, SEO, and content. And she has specialized in loyalty for retail and e-commerce brands for the past eight years. So definitely the right person to talk to. Hi, Fiona. How are you today? Hi, I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Fiona, give me a bit of a background of what got you in e-commerce, what got you into the side of loyalty programs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was really when I was working uh, in-house marketing for a content marketing agency, and we were working with a lot of e-commerce brands, and it was all about the on-site experience. It was about uh, product copy and conversion on site and that kind of thing. Um, but we also started doing lots of email, post-purchase email work and things like that. Uh, and it, it was a lot of it translation. So how do you get your, the same message across in lots of different markets? And I just I found that sort of transition from on-site to post-purchase really very interesting. And then um, the next company or the next agency I moved into was loyalty specific for much bigger brands, much bigger retailers. Um, and I just found it an absolutely fascinating world and then I was introduced to loyalty line where they were bringing together the sort of independent smaller e-commerce retailer side of things but still that really fascinating world of loyalty programs as well and the two together was a perfect mix okay sounds great now obviously with increasing ad cost increasing cpas and so on and so forth customer lifetime value becomes more and more a focus of a lot of merchants mm. now different ways to do this obviously loyalty programs is one way to do this. Many people just have in mind is like, yeah, I give some points out and then hopefully at some point my customer will come back. But the topic is much more complex than that. Give me a bit of a background on how it actually should work in a perfect world scenario. I think um, it's absolutely true. Points are behind almost everything, even the most high-end luxury programs. You know, they're run by points, but the customer doesn't have to see those points. It should be more about customer experience. I think more and more, um, with ad costs going up, et cetera, but also with people opting out of those ads and, and opting out of sharing their data, it's getting harder to deliver those personalized experiences. You've also got you know, cost of living crisis, economic downturns right, left and center. People are a lot more nervous, a lot more cautious about spending their money and they want to spend their money with brands that they know and trust. So rather than seeing a loyalty program as a, a points and rewards platform, it really should be a way to build a connection with a customer, an ongoing connection, and actually to start building up a customer community of people that know and love your brand so that when they do have the money that they want to spend, there's not really any question in their mind. They think, who do I know? I'll get good quality, good service, good product, and a bit of additional something from, and they come straight back to you. So I think um, particularly in the environment we're operating in today, um, it is much less about rewarding purchases and it's much more about finding ways to keep in touch in between those purchases. It's about um, helping customers understand through your program that you share the same beliefs or values. Uh, it's about building a community that they want to be part of even when they're not shopping so that when they do decide to shop, you're their first port of call. Okay, you brought a very interesting term up out there, opt out era. So a lot of people opt mm -hmm. out of a lot of things, email marketing, and obviously with all the updates from um, Apple, for instance, iOS 14.5, and so on and so forth, it becomes more difficult to for merchants to get through to their customers. How can a loyalty program help with that? Well, essentially, when you join a loyalty program, you're opting in to communications, you know, and there's there's lots of different ways, at, you know, at the highest level they have said yes to receiving transactional emails from you. So you can be sending them things like points balances or available reward reminders and things like that on a monthly or weekly basis. Just those, those check-in points that are really highly personalized. They're entirely unique to that customer because they've got their points balance in. But then there's also ways you can use a loyalty program to collect more of that data. So for example, we have a dog food brand 
who awards points for people that take the time to fill in their pet profile. So it would ask questions like, what color is your dog? When's its birthday, et cetera. And they can then provide personalized comms or personalized loyalty offers, et cetera, based on the profile that they've built. And I think that works for a lot of D2C brands, especially things like skincare or hair care, where you've got people filling in profiles with a little bit more information around what works for them or what kind of skin they have. And it just allows you as a merchant to carry on delivering that level of personalization that we're struggling to do a little bit more at this point, or actually just to move beyond that first name personalization that we've done for a long time. You know, I think everybody, we all think we're doing it, but what really what we're doing is putting very light detail, like a first name or something. Um, and the more you can use points to encourage people to share more and more information, the more you can personalize. Okay. Very interesting example. Maybe you can give more of these. So people, when they enter more details about their dog for someone in a pet niche, get more points for every answer. Is that right? Uh, well, for, for you get points for filling in the profile and then you will, you may receive things like bonus point promotions on products that would suit your dog. Um, so it's kind of it's it's gathering the information and incentivizing a customer to share their data, but then it's using it in a really clever way as well to get that next purchase through okay can you give some more examples i think a lot of merchants are sort of struggling to get their head around as on how to come up with ideas maybe from your experience you can give us some ideas there uh ideas about personalization or just where to find ideas or yeah um, exactly. yeah i think there's, there's lots of different ways really i think you know that well that is one um profiles you've also got things like quizzes um so uh, Octane, for example, and I think now um, Akendo, they have quiz uh, functionality built into their apps. Um, you can integrate that with your loyalty program. So again, offer people uh, points or rewards in exchange for filling in those quizzes. Again, you just gather more data about them. And um, it's a little bit of fun as well. Um, we also see people using tiers and get, as a kind of gamification in their loyalty program to collect more of that data and again then be able to use it to personalize experiences. So actually the vast majority of people using loyalty line have separate tiers in their program and the more points you earn the more you share data the more points you earn the more points you earn the more you move up the tiers and then you unlock more experiential rewards, things like early access to sales or um, early access to new product lines, the opportunity to feedback on products, that kind of thing. Okay. Points in itself are worthless. So how would you convert in the best case scenario points to something that gives some kind of benefit to a customer? I 100% I agree. And I think it's also a big concern for stores. You know, if I offer loads and loads of points, does that mean I'm going to have to look, offer loads and loads of discount rewards? Um, so I can completely understand why people worry about that. And um, in reality, there's a lot of experiential alternative kinds of incentives that you can use, which people actually value just as much. So um, a few examples I already mentioned, um, early access to sales. People absolutely love the VIP feeling of being able to get to a sale before anyone else can and that also works really well with uh, either new product lines that you're dropping or when you have something really exciting like a collaboration um, a new print that some a designers put forward for your for your range or something like that and um, people love getting early access to that kind of thing we also see a lot of people tier their um their shipping and their returns policies uh, so that the more loyal the customer the faster the delivery or they can access free delivery where other people can't um we've actually seen some people uh, offer curbside pickup and things like that to their most valued customers as well and then uh, my absolute favorite that we're seeing more and more at the moment is people designing rewards in a way that supports their their brand system or their brand uh, values and brand beliefs so um for example that same dog food brand they allow you to redeem a reward in the form of a don donation to a dog shelter for a doggy dinner. Um, we have a jewellery brand who give you um, rewards if you recycle old jewellery with them. And it doesn't have to be their brand. It can be any brand. Um, we also have uh, a merchant who is, uh, I think if you, you can redeem your points in exchange for planting a certain number of trees. Um, so it's it's finding common ground and common values to connect with customers on and then prompting that emotional connection. But it, it 
doesn't cost you as much as a brand to deliver these you know it's not impacting your bottom line in the same way but it is allowing you to connect with your customers and show them that you actually do care about the same things yeah i think these are great examples specifically when it comes to sustainability environment mm -hmm. and donations in, in that direction i think there's a lot of um, power there for brands to to build up a stronger connection with their merchants now when, when it comes to frequency and getting th back to your client um, to build up the program how often do you think do you need to get in touch with your loyalty your program with your points um, with with the client to stay in mind basically and um, I think it depends on what your um, purchase frequency is and what the life cycle of a customer is so for example, if you're selling something like um, handbags, someone's only going to come back and buy one of them. It depends how big a handbag habit you have, but you know, you're know you probably looking at three to six months max. So if you're sending somebody a, a, a weekly points reminder, it's going to get slightly, um, they're going to start to ignore it. However, if it's something like a hair care brand, then you may want weekly probably is the right answer because you want to make sure that when somebody is running out, you know, they, they come out of the shower and they're like, oh, I must order some new ones. And um, you, you're there and you're top of mind. So I think it really does depend on purchase frequency, but it's um, it's about finding enough check in points and enough slightly different check in points that you don't start to be ignored. It's not the same message going each time, but you are regularly appearing with their in their inbox with information that is really useful and really relevant so i would probably look at alternating to be honest between a points-based message available rewards this is your points balance and also really important to tell them how to use it so often those programs forget to actually say this is how you redeem it and then the, for the customer it's like well great i've got those points but i'm not really sure what to do with them i'm not sure what they amount to i'm not sure how they're going to be of any value to me so i think those sort of slightly more transactional messages points balance rewards and what to do with them and um, but then alternate that with really great content that doesn't sell that is not a uh, product or discount heavy it's uh, perhaps examples of people using your products or really inspiring stories or I think actually there's a real opportunity for people particularly in the sort of independent retailer space to tell their brand story so introduce your founder in, interview your founder try and you know, use those emails to share some of the history of the brand why you exist and why you're selling the products you are and then I think you get this beautiful uh, synergy between the sales messages and the sort of the prompts to actually purchase but then why you would want to purchase from that brand and again with the, the kind of lost cost of living and everything I think it's important to straddle that line quite carefully Okay. Now, with loyalty line, obviously, you are helping merchants in implementing a program. It works with Shopify and other platforms. Tell me a little bit more about the app and how it works. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as exactly as you say, we we do work predominantly with Shopify, Shopify Plus, but we um we work with other brands, um, sorry, other platforms, and via API as well. And essentially, with loyalty line, you have the opportunity to create your own loyalty program, so you can brand it how you like you can uh, offer the points and rewards that that you want you can create something that reflects your brand entirely obviously the um the level of customization depends a little bit on the plan that you're on but the idea is that anybody should be able to build their own loyalty program without the need for a developer um or if you have development expertise then fantastic you can make it that little bit more customized but yeah we believe that everybody should have the opportunity to retain their clients which is not easy to do okay when it comes to a timeline and sort of what kind of homework does a, uh, a potential user of your app need to do before they approach you so what's what do they need to have on the list before they can get started it's a really great question i think the important thing really is to just understand your customer's life cycle. So how often are they repeat purchasing? What should you expect in terms of repeat purchase rates? Um, how many years are they staying with you? What What's the full lifetime value looking like? What could you expect it to look like? Um, how often are they likely to purchase? That I think that's the kind of information that you really need average order value as well what was it before you started you know if you have those benchmarks then you can see how things impact I think the tricky thing about loyalty is it doesn't happen overnight it does take um it's I kind of liken it to SEO a lot of the time where people 
they want it to be a silver bullet they want it to work straight away but unfortunately customers don't become loyal overnight and even if they do join your loads program they may not return to spend straight away because they have to have time to build up that points balance they have to have time to need that product again you know so um unfortunately yeah we can't promise results overnight but i think yeah what you need to do before you start is understand what the metrics are you're trying to move and make sure that you've got a good steer on what they are so you can compare over time but also loyalty often is a set and forget type thing um people create a program they run it in the background people join they don't see much value from it but they never quite get around to tweaking it or changing it so i the key thing is to know where you want to start start really small start just by rewarding a few activities um start with purchases but also a couple of simple additional things like points for birthdays or incentivizing social shares and follows and maybe incentivizing reviews that kind of thing start small but make sure you've got somebody who has dedicated time to that loyalty program don't let it just run in the background make sure somebody is taking responsibility for retention because if you if you just leave it running it won't perform if you have somebody that's just regularly going back checking in seeing what's working adding a little bit of extra functionality here or there then you'll start to see success so i think okay. yeah in, in terms of homework know what metrics you want to improve and know who's going to manage it okay i think you just gave away a lot of golden nuggets there for someone who wants to get started and it <laughs> already answered also a few of my questions that i had so <laughs> in regards of a, a pricing structure how much does it cost immersion to work with you guys and um, it completely depends on the plan size. So we start as little as $159 a month, but we do have a free plan on the Shopify app store as well. Um, and our pricing increases by um, order number rather than member count, because we know that not every loyalty program member will engage with your store every single month. So to charge you for all of those members every month is unfair. So it will the pricing really depends on the number of orders that you're processing per month. Okay. Where can people find out more about you guys? Uh, so you can either head to loyaltyline.com um, or you can find us on the Shopify app store or we are um, on all the uh, typical social media channels as well. Okay, sounds great. So I think giving the idea that um, loyalty programs is a bit of a long-term game, I think that's a very important point there. Don't um, come and think that a day later you will make the huge lifetime customer value from the <laughs> app. Um, so a good takeaway there. I think it's it's a um, strategy that most merchants should have in their repertoire to build up their customer base and to get more returning customers to their store. Fiona, thanks so much for all this information i will put the links in the show notes then you just want to click away and have a great day fantastic thank you